Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss an important topic that is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria or PNH. So it's very clinically significant because it's an important cause of hemolytic anemia. Though it's not much uh, common in incidence, but it causes a severe degree of hemolytic anemia and can be associated with various complications. So uh, please stay hooked till the end of the video. We are going to have some interesting stuffs uh, in this video, and we are going to discuss in depth regarding the PNH, including the high yield points that will be very important for your various exam points of view. Okay, coming to the PNH general features, there is uh, increased sensitivity to complement induced red cell lysis that results in intravascular hemolysis, and there is a complement mediated lysis that not only affects the red cell but can affect all the cell lineages, including WBC and platelets, causing pancytopenia. There is increased incidence of venous thrombosis also is being seen in most of these patients. Coming to the etiology, there is a mutation in pig A gene, which is located in X chromosome. But important thing is that it is an acquired genetic disorder it's not inherited uh, genetic disorder. It is an acquired genetic disorder. And uh, this happens usually at the st stem cell level. So that's why uh, there are various complications and these persons are predisposed to various stem cell related disorder. So pig gauge in mutation results in loss of anchor protein for decay accelerating factor that is CD55. CD59, which is called as MIRL or membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis. And rarely we uh, can have C8 binding protein deficiency also. So these uh, genetic deficiencies, they occur on RBC, neutrophil and platelet surface. So the role of uh, decay accelerating factor is to neutralize complement, which declare, decays the C3 and C5 convertase. So it causes uh, undue complement um, activation and it balances out the complement level. CD59 is the most important uh, protein uh, that is implicated. This deficiency is the most important in terms of the PNH. It's a potent inhibitor of C3 convertase that prevents the spontaneous activation of alternate complement pathway. And this is regarded as the most important uh, deficiency for the causation of PNH. So because of uh, the deficiency of CD59 and CD55, there is undue complement activation that results in lysis. The lysis can happen uh, at, on the surface of neutrophil, uh, RBCs, and platelet. And, and it is caused by C5B9, that is called as membrane attack complex, that causes the lysis of all these cells. An important thing to note that it occurs more commonly at night because of the hypoventil relative hypoventilation in the night that causes acidosis carbon dioxide retention. So it is called as respiratory acidosis. And respiratory acidosis is known to enhance the complement mediated attachment to the cell and causes accentuation of complement mediated lysis. So there is paroxysmal episodes. There is an episodes of hemolysis that occurs during sleep. So it is nocturnal due to, as uh, we discussed just now, that due to acidification, there is more of hemolysis occurring during the night. So it results in hemoglobinuria, and the patient voids very dark uh, color urine, cola color, cola color urine. That is the characteristic feature of uh, PNH. First voided morning urine sample is generally taken for the examination, which is dark red. Over time, it can cause iron deficiency anemia due to the lysis of RBC and release of uh, hemoglobin. Platelet destruction can predispose to thrombosis. Platelet destruction is due to release of thromboxin A2 from the platelet. There is predisposition to cause hepatic vein thrombosis or Bourchieri syndrome. There is propensity to cause portal vein thrombosis and also cerebral vein th thrombosis. Endothelial damage is inflicted by C5B9 membrane attack complex. And that can also be a contributing factor towards the, towards the causation of thrombosis. There is high risk of MDS or even many of the patients they develop into acute myelogenous leukemia. So 
this uh, is because of the mutation the genetic mutation occurring at the stem cell level the pluripotent stem cell level because of which the, the cells the pluripotent stem cells can be modified into large number of blast cells or mds or even aml can be seen in um, greater chances it, it can it is much more predisposed in patients of aml in patients of pnh so this incidence is markedly enhanced now coming to the diagnosis the diagnosis in, hinges on sugar water test that is the initial screen test sugar water enhances the complement attachment to rbcs that leading that leads to the rbc hemolysis there is positive ham test that is the confirmatory test which demonstrates the in vitro complement induced hemolysis in acidified serum so if we acidify the serum in uh, in vitro then it leads to more of hemolysis there is urine hemosiderinuria and that is due to chronic hemolysis there is decreased serum haptoglobulin and there is a peripheral blood pancytopenia due to decreased uh, due to increased destruction and also there is increased reticulocytosis as happens in all kinds of hemolytic anemia now flow cytometry is these days regarded as the investigation of choice which directly detects the red cells that are deficient in gpi protein such as cd55 and cd59 so this is a demonstration of hams test so patients uh, serum if it is acidified it leads to marked uh, hemolysis whereas uh, the normal normal person uh, even if with acidified serum there will not be uh, much of significant hemolysis so uh, it will be negative for hemolysis whereas patients with pnh if the, their serum is acidified it will lead to severe hemolysis and hemosiderin cast may be sometimes uh, seen in the microscopic examination of urine coming to the treatment aspects monoclonal antibody such as eculizumab has been uh, used these days and that prevents the conversion of c5 to c5a so um, it's it's a quite a potential drug that is widely used but again there are various uh, side effects uh, so that limits uh, the treat the use of this monoclonal antibodies so it's not being widely used various immunosuppressive uh, drugs can also be used uh, along with this monoclonal antibody and the ultimate cure lies in hematopoietic stem cell transplantation that is regarded as the definite cure for pnh so uh, that's all for this particular uh, video we learned uh, the high yield points and uh, we learned all the important facts regarding the pnh now let's uh, recapitulate them um, quickly so pnh is acquired at the stem cell level pig gauge in mutation x linked uh, disease acquired disease not an inherited disease there is a pancytopenia destruction of all the cells uh, all the cell lineages are seen and this is chiefly due to cd59 and also due to cd55 defect that leads to persistent complement activation and the person is also highly predisposed to develop thrombotic episodes and can also develop mds as well as acute myelogenous leukemia and the treatment includes various uh, drugs including monoclonal antibody and ultimate cure is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation so hope you learned all the important facts try to recapitulate uh, these facts by watching this video again and again and don't forget to give your valuable feedback in the comment section of the video and also please uh, subscribe to the channel please stay hooked to the channel for lots of videos and lots of interactive stuff ahead thank you all